So tonight we're going to start a new series. It is God's Answers. So as mentioned earlier, that a couple so a couple of weeks ago we gathered questions, mainly questions of singles about about life. So actually, these questions are very important questions. These are your questions. This is these are my questions, and we cannot afford to answer these questions incorrectly. We have to we have to really seek God's answers for this. Because only God can answer these questions correctly. Because we know that man's understanding are limited, our knowledge. There are a lot of things we don't understand. But God's understanding is perfect. For He created all things and His knowledge is just, indeed He knows all things because He is the all-knowing God. For tonight, this is the question that we will address. Why do I exist? So, bakit ako nandito? Bakit kayo nandito? Bakit ka nandito, di ba? So, so, for the say, you know, have you ever asked this, that question, bakit ka nandito? Bakit ka nandito? So, sige, for the sake of everyone, Please ask your seatmate, bakit ka nandito? Sige. Bakit ka nandito? Sige. Bakit daw? Bakit? De. Parang galit yung iba, no? De. So, and then imagine ito. Later, we'll have our fellowship. Then imagine this, guys, na fellowship tayo mamaya, and you're going there. Perhaps, saan ba tayo? Mount Macdo or ano? Perhaps Mount Macdo and you went there, and people are already there as well. Then someone approached you, right? and approached you and asked you, Hey, why are you here? Why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> what would you feel? You would feel unwelcome. You would feel like this person thinks that, I, that they're better off without me. That I have no, that my presence doesn't matter there. Right? That's what we feel. That actually, that's sad. And but but the more tragic thing that might happen than that is that we ourselves don't know why our presence matter. That we ourselves don't know why we are here. Di natin alam kung bakit tayo dito. That is more tragic than other people don't know why we are here. But we ourselves don't know why. We are here. So, I remember when I entered college, that's a couple of years ago. And, 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 and my purpose, when I, was, when, I, when I entered college, my purpose for me, why I was there, was very clear for me. Huh? And my purpose back then was to be a scholar and to finish college. So, bawal mag girlfriend, joke lang bawal mag girlfriend. Pero yun yung, ano ko, yun yung purpose ko is to, to be a scholar and to finish college. Sabi yun, wow, nax ang ano naman, ang studios. You know why? Why that was, that was my purpose? Because in high school, my only purpose was to rebel. Because I so hated the condition of our family. And I, I barely passed high school because of that. And I realized that for me to successfully rebel... I have to be independent. I have to be I have to be independent. I have to have a job. I have to earn my own money. So for me to own my own money, I have to finish college. And, ha- and for me to be able to be somehow independent while in college, I have to be a scholar. So that was my target when I was in college. And and that's what that's what I did. I studied, and that's why no one succeeded inviting me to cut classes. Because I would say, my purpose here is to study, and they just went their way. And, and, but but that's what my pur- that's, that was my purpose, and that's what I did. And, and yes, I did finish college. I did land the job, and I did land the job. I started to earn 
and eventually became independent. I arrived where I wanted to be, to be independent. And after that, I asked myself, what's next? I have no purpose now. I, I arrived where I wanted to be. So perhaps I'll set a new purpose in my life. Perhaps I would, I would target to be married. I would target to have children. Target to have children. Or, or I would target to climb and reach the top of the corporate ladder. I, so all of these things, to enjoy life, to get rich, Though those things are good, I still I saw them as things that wouldn't would, won't satisfy me in the end. So I I found no real meaning in them, and that is where I started to ask, what's the purpose of life? Is this what life all about? You know, targeting something, hitting it. There must be something more to life than this. And that's why I can really relate to our topic tonight. What's our purpose? Why do I exist? So in the Bible, there's a book called Ecclesiastes. So written by King Solomon. And this book he wrote is about his search for life's, for life's meaning and purpose. So short Short intro about King Solomon. He was the king of Israel, son of David. And in his time of reign, that was the time where Israel in, was in its apex of power and wealth. And actually, it's also the time where Israel is, was not experiencing any war. Not very, very peaceful yung time ni King Solomon, his reign is very peaceful. That's why he was able to write many literature. He also, he, aside from Ecclesiastes, he also wrote songs of so- Song of Songs and the Book of Proverbs. Right? So that's, those are also found in the Bible. So, and he, he was also known as the wisest man who ever lived on the earth, second to Jesus. So in this book, this wise wealthy, powerful king wrote about his search for life's meaning and purpose. And he started this book with these words. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. He said there, The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, utterly Meaningless. Everything is meaningless. So, right there in the beginning of the book, he already told us what he found about his search for life's meaning and purpose. He found nothing. He, find, he found meaningless in life. He, find no, he found no purpose in life. So, but the question is, the, the question to ask right now is, where did he look for purpose and meaning? So if we would go through the book of Ecclesiastes, we would see the things that, see where he looked this, his meaning and purpose. First, he looked for meaning and purpose in pleasures and achievements. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 10 to 11, it says, so he pursued pleasure. In verse 10, he said, I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my labor, and this was the reward of all my toil. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands have done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. Also in his achievement, he tried to look for purpose. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse, same chapter, verses 18 to 19. It says, I hated all the things I had, I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them 
to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish. Yet they will have control over all the fruit of my toil into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. He didn't find purpose in pleasure and achievement. Though, though he, he was the king of Israel at that time, he, he has the, all the access for pleasure. He has all the access. He can do anything that he wanted to do. But he, yeah, and yet, he, yes, he did it. But he wasn't able to find meaning and purpose in them. Then, he tried to look for purpose in wealth. At the, at, at the time of his reign, the kingdom of Israel was, the income of the kingdom of Israel was enormous. That the tradings that Israel would do with the neighboring nations, it just, it just prospers at this time. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10, Solomon said, Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. Yet, yes, he didn't find meaning in money, in wealth. So even in his wisdom, even this is the wisest man speaking. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 15 16, he said, Then I said to myself, The fate of the fool will overcome me also. What then do I gain by being wise? I said to myself, This too is meaningless. For the wise, like the fool, will not long remember. The days have already come when both have been forgotten. Like the fool, the wise too must die. The days have already come when both have been forgotten. Like the fool, the wise too must die. King Solomon is saying, was saying that at the end of this life, the wise and the fool will die, will, must face death. So have you heard of the phrase, death is the great equalizer? That in death, no one is rich, no one is poor, no one is educated, no one is uneducated, no one is pretty, no one is ugly, that in death everyone will decompose and will become dust. Everyone lives this life with their hands empty. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 15, Solomon said, Everyone comes naked from their mother's womb, and as everyone comes, so they depart. They take nothing from their toil that they can carry in their hands. He's right with that, that nothing really on this earth, that in this earth we can carry after death, after we die. And knowing the life of King Solomon, where, did you th- where, where do you think he really pursued purpose and meaning? Yung talaga number one na he really pursued purpose and meaning. Sa tingin nyo, any guess? Where, what area did he really pursue purpose and meaning? Saan? Sa, 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 sa tingin nyo, sa, nyo, sa nyo hinanap talaga? Number one. Any guess? Correct, tama. <laughs> In women, di ba? If you would, if you, if you've read the life of King Solomon, di ba? So, sige, ito. First Kings chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. Let me read it to you. King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites. They were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, you must not intermarry with them because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. He had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wives led him astray. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted 
to the Lord his God. As as the heart of David, as the heart of his Dave, of David, his father has been had been. He followed Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not follow the Lord completely, as David, his father, had done. In this part of King Solomon's life, he wasn't able to apply his great wisdom. And he really ripped the negative consequences of this from in his life and in his kingdom. He tried to look for purpose and meaning in where? Relationships, sex, pleasures, but didn't find purpose and meaning in them. That kaya nga umabot siya sa 700 wives, 300 concubines. Kasi one relation after another, he, he cannot find satisfaction in them. Diba? And that's, that's, at the end of his life, he really didn't find satisfaction in relationships. In his many wives and concubines. Thus, the beginning of his book, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. This question of, this question of meaning haunted the human souls as early as King Solomon's time. And is still haunting our souls to this day. So let me read to you a couple of quotes from two very prominent writers and philosophers regarding this matter. From Leo Tolstoy in his book, A Confession, 1882. This is the time where at, at his 50s, he, his, he, had, he had plenty of money, he, the, her family, his family is well, they his wife loved him, their children loved him, but he had this thought sink in him at his 50s. Let me read it to you what he said. I could give no reasonable meaning to any single action or to my whole life. I was only surprised that I could have avoided understanding this from the very beginning. It has been so long known to all. Today or tomorrow, sickness and death will come, and they had come already to those I love. Nothing will remain but stench and worms. Sooner or later, my affairs, whatever they may be, will be forgotten, and I shall not exist. Then why go on making any effort? How can man fail to see this? And how go on living? That is what is surprising. One can only live while one is intoxicated with life. As soon one is sober, it is impossible not to see that it is all a mere fraud and a stupid fraud. That is precisely what it is. There is nothing either amusing or witty about it. It is simply cruel and stupid. My question, that which at the age of 50 brought me to the verge of suicide, was the simplest of questions lying in the soul of every man, from the foolish child to the wisest elder. It was a question without an answer to which one cannot live. As I had found my experience, it was, what will come of what I am doing today or shall do tomorrow? What will come of my whole life? Differently expressed, this question is, why should I live? Why wish for anything or do anything? It can also be expressed thus, is there any meaning in life that the inevitable death awaiting me does not destroy? Second, Thomas Nagel, current professor in the, in, of philosophy in New York University, and in his book, A Very Short Introduction to Philosophy, 1987, he wrote this, Even if you produce a great work of literature, 
which continues to be read thousands of years from now, eventually the solar system will cool, all the, or the universe will wind down or collapse, and all the trace of your efforts will vanish. In any case, we can't hope for even a fraction of this sort of immortality. If there's any point at all to what we do, we have to find it within our own lives. Why is there any difficulty in that? You can explain the point of most of the things you do. You work to earn money to support yourself and perhaps your family. You eat because you're hungry. Sleep because you're tired. Go for a walk or call up, call up a friend because you feel like it. Read the newspaper to find out what's going on in the world. If you, didn't, if you didn't do any of those things, you'd be miserable. So what's the big problem? The problem is that although there are justifications and explanations for most of the things, big and small, that we do within life, none of these explanations can explain the point of your life as a whole. The whole of which all these activities, successes, and failures, strivings, and disappointments are parts. If you think about the whole thing, there seems to be no point to it at all. Looking at it from the outside, it wouldn't matter if you had never existed. And after you've gone out of existence, it won't matter that you did exist. Of course, your existence matters to other people, your parents and others who care about you. But taken as a whole, their lives have no point either. So ultimately, it doesn't matter that you matter to them. You matter to them and they matter to you. And that may give your life a feeling of significance, but you're just taking in each other's washing, so to speak. Given that any person exists, he has needs and concerns, which make particular things and people within his life matter to him. But the whole thing doesn't matter. With the advancement of our education, our knowledge today, the observation about life 3,000 years ago is still the same as of today. That everything under the sun is meaningless. That everything in this life, the pleasures, the achievements, the wealth, good names, status, relationships, education, wisdom. If we make them our life's purpose, if we pursue them, then we will get to the end of our life realizing that, we, that our existence really did not matter. Teka lang, hinga muna tayo. Parang shadow na ano eh. Sobrang meaningless na nung usapan natin eh. So, uh, pero... But, but don't worry. This is not my last point. This is not my last point. And, pero huwag kayong aalis nang ito lang yung naririnig nyo. Baka, baka lumabas kayo dyan, wow, walang meaning yung buhay ko. Di ba? Parang, kaya, yung mga ashery, huwag nyo aya ang may lumabas ng kwarto. Ha? Hanggang hindi natatapos yung message. Pero, but seriously, my next point is very important. So, so far, Solomon looked for meaning and purpose in these things and found none. So where else do you think we should look for meaning and purpose? Tingin nyo guys, sa natin dapat hanapin yung meaning and purpose natin? Any guess? God. Who gave King Solomon wisdom, wealth, and honor? Who gave King Solomon those things? God. First Kings chapter 2, verse 12 to 13, God said to Solomon, I will do what you have asked. God, I, Solomon asked for wisdom from God. I will do what you've asked. He asked wisdom so that he can govern wisely the nation of Israel. So God said to him, I will do what you've asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never be Will there never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. It is from the good hands of God that 
good things. These good things comes from these things. They're actually good things. But, we, but they can become evil if we make them our life's purpose. But the purpose of those, these things is to be used so that we can fulfill our true and ultimate purpose. King Solomon concluded the book of Ecclesiastes with these verses. In the last chapter of the book, chapter 12, the last chapter, the last two verses, verses 13 and 14, he said, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, 13, 14, this is what he said. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the duty of all mankind. For God will bring every deed into judgment including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. He concluded that the purpose of mankind, the duty of mankind, is to fear God and to keep His commandments. Again, he concluded, this is the duty of mankind. This is the purpose of mankind, to fear God, and to keep His commandments. He said, that, he said this after all, his, all, the, of the, all, that, all the searches he had done diba? and found nothing. After doing all of those things, looking for purpose in pleasure, wealth, achievements, and found nothing, he then came back to God. And he acknowledged God, that God is the ultimate purpose of man. That He acknowledged that man's purpose is to fear God, to worship God, to revere Him, to fear Him, to obey Him, to obey His commandments. So my second point is this. The reason of, for our existence is to fear God and to obey His commandments. That's the answer to our question tonight. Why do we exist? We exist to fear God and to obey His commandments. Question, do you fear God? Do we fear God? The, the last chapter of Ecclesiastes started with this phrase. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Remember your creator in the days of your youth. King Solomon, after all his experience, this, is, this was his advice to the young people, to the youth. And all of us here are young, I believe. Yeah. And this was his advice. Remember your creator. Remember your creator. This is what he is trying to tell us. Guys, singles, youth, remember your creator. Remember that you are a created being, that there is a creator and that creator is not you. That you have to acknowledge him, that you must fear him. That you must fear him when? When you are old? No, you must fear him when you are young when you have all the strength to do all the things that you want, when you have all the access for pleasure, to pleasure, to, to everything that you want, that you, to the things that would tempt you to go astray from God. This is the time where you should remember God. This is the time that you should remember that you are a created being. This is the time that you should, that we should, Fear Him. And that is, our, that is our first duty, to fear God, to remember that He created us, that He can destroy us anytime He will. And the second purpose, the second duty of man is to keep God's commandments. 
what are the what are God's commandments? The Ten Commandments, right? So, okay, pasadahan natin yung Ten Commandments. <laughs> Let, let's read this all together. One, you must not love. Two, not make yourselves an idol, any kind or an image of anything has a you must not bow down to them nor worship them for I the Lord your God am a child's God you will not tolerate your affection for any other gods you must not misuse the name of the Lord your God fourth remember to obs- Ay, no, sorry <laughs> okay. remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy you have six days each week for your ordinary work the Sabbath day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. Honor your father and mother. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Are, this com- are, are those commandments burdensome to you guys? For me, yes, <laughs> in my past. But the question is, the next question for me, for you guys, my, my question to you is, what is the greatest commandment? Do you know what's the greatest commandment? Jesus was asked this question. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 36, 40, I, I've heard some correct answers. In this verse, let me read it to you. Jesus was asked, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and the, all the demands of the, of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Love God with all and love others as yourself. So, but first, let me, let, let me redeem for you the word love because our culture really abused the word love already so many ways, so many times. The word love here is the, in original text, is in Greek, it, it is agape. And agape is unconditional love. A love that will stay no matter what, in good times, in bad times, a love that never lives nor forsakes. It is a committed love. It's not a selfless love. That's the word love there, agape. And so in summary of God's commandments, this is our second duty, second main duty, is to love God with, to love God with all and to love others as we love Ourselves. So again, the answer to our question, why do we exist? We exist because God created us to fear Him, revere Him, and worship Him, and to obey His commandments, to love Him, and to love others. Question, why do you think God wants us to love Him? Any guess? Why do you think God wants us to love Him? Napag-isipan niyo na ba yan? Nag-isip ako kanina. Oh, ano? Bakit mo gustong Lord na mahalin kita? Ba- why God wants us to love Him? What, what do you think? Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever wanted someone to love you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ako naranasan ko na yan. And you know Why? You know what the reason why, why, why I want that person to love me? You know why? Because I love the person. God wants us to love Him because He loves us. That's the truth. He created us because He wants to love us. He chose, he chose to create us. And He chose to love us. And He wants us to love Him. Let me give you an illustration for this. Sige, para mas mag-sink in sa atin. 
So imagine I am a creator. Huh? Imagine I am a creator. And I have decided to create something. I have decided na gagawa ako ng isang napakagwapong nilalang. Huh? I have decided na gagawa ako ng napakagwapong nilalang. And imagine, nagawa ko na to. Nagawa ko na tong nilalang na to and tatawagin ko na lang siya. Di ba? So, John, come forth. Di ba? So, yeah. So, I have created yung napakagwapong nilalang. Di ba? Someone who is who came from my own image, based from my own image. Joke lang, hindi lang. Joke lang yan. And, di ba? I chose to create him. Imagine lang, yan lang to, kunyari lang to. I chose to create him and I chose to love him. And, <laughs> and a question sa inyo guys, ha? would you love your creator? Would you love your creator? Let's me, let me, let me, let, Let me ask my creation. <laughs> yeah. John, would you love me? I do not love you. I cannot love you. And I will never love you. They all prepared. What do you think I should do with my creation? <laughs> Destroy him? I can destroy him. I created him. Yeah. That's logical. But because of my great love, I will not destroy him. I will pursue him. I will reach out to him. I will show him that I love him. That I'm willing to give my life for him. Right? Would you love a creator like that? I would. I would love a creator like that. And that is our creator. That is Yahweh. That is Jesus Christ. That is God. That is the Word who became flesh and dwell among us. Who died on the cross to pay for the penalty of our sins. That we, that, so that the broken relationship between us and Him can be fixed. That's our God. And that's the God we love. That's the God we worship. And when John said to me, I, I cannot love you ever. Sakit na na. And, pero, we, we, actually, for me, I chose to create John, example lang. <laughs> I chose to create him, and I chose to love him, and I want him to love me back. But for him to be able to love me, I have to give him free will, for love is a choice. Tonight, guys, are we going to choose to love your creator? So, knowing how much God loves us, makes easier for us to obey Him. The Ten Commandments, Lord, I will do that because I love you. I will do, do those things because I love you. Hindi siya burdensome because I love you. And that's what the gospel does to human heart. It fills our heart with love. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. It says, Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and we exist for Him. And the one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we are all, from whom or are all things, and we exist through Him. Our purpose, our meaning is not something to be pursued in this world. Our purpose is me- and meaning is someone who is pursuing us. That is our purpose. He is our purpose. Our purpose is a person. And if tonight you would finally ask God to come to your life, Lord, I surrender. 
I repent from all of my sins. I don't want to live my life on my own. I acknowledge you as my God, as my creator. And I acknowledge my need for a savior. Someone, I need someone to save me from my life of sin. And if you decide that tonight, then tonight you have found your purpose. Your purpose is to have a relationship with your Creator, to fear Him, to be awe at His presence, to worship Him, to love Him, and to be loved by Him. And if you would choose that, He will. He will continue to transform you. He will change you for the best. He will make you as white as wool. He he will wash all of your sins away. So that when you face Him at at the time appointed, you can be as as in as stated in by Paul in his epistle that he that we may be presented to God to Jesus as his blameless bride as the church and again our purpose tonight that tonight we learned that our purpose are one to fear God to revere him because he created us and to obey Him because we love Him, because He first loved us. And as a church, we have that one purpose as well, as a church. We are a church. We are the assembly of redeemed children of God. Those who put their faith, us, put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for our salvation, for our redemption. And our purpose is to love God. We're all in this together. And together we'll, we will be the light. Our purpose as a church is to be the light and soul to this dying world. To reach those who are not yet, who have not heard the gospel yet. To share them the good news so that they may also experience how good a relationship with our Lord is. How go, that sabi nga, di ba? Taste and see, sabi ni Peter, that the Lord is good. We, want, we have tasted that here, and we want others to taste that also. But let's, let's worship God, continue to worship God and thank God. And let's thank God for tonight. And I hope for, for everyone, our purpose that made clear tonight, that, is, that our purpose is not something that we pursue in this world, but it is someone who is pursuing us. Our purpose is a person. Our purpose is God. Our purpose is our relationship with Him. Our purpose is to worship Him. So let's thank our Lord for tonight. So Lord God, our Father in heaven, we worship you. Thank you, Lord God, for all the things, Lord God, that you have said through me. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, na yung mga nasabi ko, those things that I've said that came from you, Lord God, may, may it linger on us as we discuss. May it really run in those things in our mind, Father God, that may, we, may that our hearts would really understand how much you love us. Lord God, that we would really understand and experience our purpose. And that is to worship you. That is to fear you. That is to know you. That is to love you. Yes, Lord God. And everything that I've said, Lord God, that, that does not come from you, Lord God, take it away. And Lord God, bless our time as we continue to discuss and as we continue to fellowship, Lord God, as we continue to pray to you, as we continue to experience your presence, Father God, together, Lord God, in Big South, as we, as we continue to discuss in our breakout group and as we fellowship later. All of this, we thank you in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Thank you, guys.